Hello and welcome once more to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself, Amaza, as always, I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today's video is going to be kicked off by none other than AMD with an announcement, nonetheless. As today, AMD has released its newest entry into the professional lineup of Radeon graphics cards called the WX3200. It is, of course, again, a pro-level card, but it is heavily focused on acceleration for CAD programs. Now, it is quite a small card. It is a single-slot form factor card, but despite this, it has quite a bit of power under the hood. It has 640 stream processors, which put in 1.666 excuse me teraflops of compute performance, which is pretty damn reasonable, especially when you remember that this card weighs in at just under 50 watts of TDP and is powered entirely by that all-important PCIe. It also has four DisplayPort 1.4 connectors, so you can have four 8K mon uh, sorry, four 4K monitors or a single 8K monitor, and you're looking at looking at excuse me four gigs of DDR5 memory and 128 bit wide bus. It is priced at 200 bucks. So if you are looking for a professional level GPU at a fairly affordable cost, then this might be something you would want to look into. You can find a link in the description below this video to AMD's website if you're at all curious about this graphics card. So our next topic is actually regarding a benchmark for the 32 core Zen 2 Epic Roam. And just to give credit where it's absolutely due, this is all thanks to a viewer who sent this in to us via email by the name of Martin, so thank you very much Martin. However, we have a user benchmark, as you will see on screen, where we see the Zen 2 core being faced off against the Ryzen Threadripper 2990WX. And as you can see for yourself, Rome does rather well indeed against the old generation Threadripper. Perhaps this is one of the reasons why Threadripper 3 has been delayed? Pure speculation on my part, but either way you can see the results for yourself and you can also find a link in the description below this video. So we're going to move over from AMD to their arch nemesis NVIDIA. Now you may have seen a report floating around early last month which basically stated that NVIDIA were actually going with Samsung on their future Ampere GPUs. And this was reportedly confirmed by various sources and now it's been confirmed again by a report from the Korea Herald. And Basically, the report states that the NVIDIA Korea leader has confirmed the switch from TSMC to Samsung. Now, this has not been officially announced by NVIDIA or Samsung either, so do keep that in mind. But, unfortunately, we don't have much information about the partnership. He only called the production commitment for Ampere, quote-unquote, substantial, but unfortunately would not be dragged down into any specifics. For those of you wondering, okay, that's really interesting. Why did NVIDIA make this decision? Is it a pure cost thing? Is it a performance thing? Well, unfortunately, we don't actually know. It's not really clear, because, again, we haven't had an official announcement from either Samsung or NVIDIA. There was a report doing the rounds not too long ago by the EE Times, which basically said that it was a cost thing as Samsung quote-unquote aggressively undercut TSMC. And that would, of course, make perfect sense, but there could be there's some performance things we don't know about. Perhaps it does better in other areas versus TSMCs. We don't know, unfortunately. Anything would just be pure speculation, as is Empire itself, I'm afraid. Because, well, there are very few details known about Empire. It is expected to launch next year and is apparently going to be the successor to the Turing architecture. You may recall there was speculation that um, sorry, Ampere would actually be the next architecture after Pascal, but obviously it ended up being Turing. But there were those reports during the round, as you may recall, because obviously there was Volta as well, which of course we ended up not seeing a consumer level card for. And we thought for a while that the next generation might be Ampere, but of course it seems that, at least if these re reports are correct, that we're going to be seeing Ampere following up next in 2020. So, when are we going to learn more about this uh, architecture, I hear you ask? Well, it depends if a video follows the previous form that they have. You may remember that we learned the most about touring in SIGGRAPH in the August before its official announcement at Gamescom. So, I would fully expect, if we are seeing Ampere launch next year, to see a video at least talk about it a little bit at SIGGRAPH, whether or not they'll go into much detail, as they did with 
Turing, I obviously don't know, I don't have my crystal ball, and I can never find that thing when I need it, but it's going to be interesting nonetheless. So we're actually going to take a brief trip back to AMD now, as we have the Mind Factory report for June of this year, which once again was helpfully submitted to the r slash AMD subreddit by Ingeball. Hopefully I'm pronouncing their name correctly. You can find a link to the Reddit thread in the description below this video. But they have helpfully shared several images, which we're going to go through now. Now I'm sure most of you are familiar by this point, as I have done ba this basically every month for the last, well, ages. But MindFactory.de is the leading digital retailer in Germany and they release this report every month to show the market shares for the following month and we have seen a strong lead for AMD going back since basically forever. So we're going to start things out with the number of CPUs sold again for the month of June and we see again a significant lead here for AMD as you can see on the screen we see 69% of CPUs sold were AMD of some description and 31% actually belonged to Intel. And we can even break that down further into what percentage was what for each company. So in terms of CPUs sold, 71% was Pinnacle Ridge, 19% was Raven Ridge for AMD, and 9% was Summit Ridge, and 1% was Threadripper. As for Intel, unsurprisingly, a significant portion is taken up by Coffee Lake in both its forms, that being the Coffee Lake Refresh at 61% and Normal Coffee Lake at 32%, with KB Lake bringing up 6 and Skylake X bringing in a 1% value. However, we also have the revenue in euros available as well. Now, this is very much following the trend that we have seen reflected over the past few months as we see a much closer lead between AMD and Intel here. As AMD are still winning, but it is much, much closer between the two companies. We see a um, revenue in euros of 53% versus Intel's 47 But if you compare it to the previous month of May, we see that they have actually gained a little since then. Only a couple of percent, granted. But we do see it a small gain versus the 51% we saw them for them in May, and of course, definitely an improvement over the exact tie that we saw in April of 50% for each company. Now, this is all really interesting stuff, but it's kind of the pre precursor to the most interesting one, which I think we can all agree is going to be next month, as of course, this month brings the release of Zen 3, or 3000, I suppose to specify, for AMD. So we're going to be seeing all of the flagship CPUs come out for Ryzen 3000, and it's going to be really interesting to see if we see any shift either way for these companies. Going to be keeping a very close eye out for the July reports, to be sure. So let's finish things up with a bit of gaming news. I kind of want to update you guys, as I did discuss this previously, with Shenmue 3. So I'm sure you guys have seen all the controversy and kerfuffle surrounding this game. It has been, to be honest, completely overtaking the discussion surrounding the game, at least if you're on PC, and to be honest with you, quite rightly so. A bit of TLDR if you somehow missed it though. Obviously this was one of the most successful Kickstarters in recent memory, and originally the PC version was promised to be on Steam, as you might expect, but it was recently announced to be an Epic Games Store exclusive. Which, unsurprisingly, given the recent controversy over the Epic Games Store and its exclusivity, exclusivity excuse me, strategy, this went over pretty much like a bag of rotten fish. And it wasn't really helped all that much by the fact that they were refusing at first to refund backers who were upset over the fact that they would not be getting a Steam key that they were promised. Now there has been an update on this on the Kickstarter page, as you find linked in the description below this video. But the long and short of it is, refunds will now be available. Let me read you the direct quote, however. Quote, as noted in the update and survey at launch, we had originally planned for PC distribution through Steam. Taking publishing and sales considerations into account, Yeastnet and DeepSilver agreed to our partnership with Epic Games Store on PC version distribu distribution. In response to you backers who have requested Steam keys for their rewards, we discussed offering the keys on the day of release. However, coordination with the sales policy of the involved companies was untenable, and as a result, we are not able to make a day one distribution option for Steam keys available. That we are not able to offer Steam keys for Kickstarter rewards at the game time of the game's release is a great disappointment and inconvenience for those backers who were expecting to receive them. 
We deeply apologise for the unrest caused by the announcement, along with Deep Silver and Epic Games, we have agreed to refund requests will be honoured. Details concerning the refund request process will be announced in a following update. So long story short, there's a couple of things that we can take away from that. They are talking about they cannot get Steam Keys day one distribution happening. That's not going to happen. But it does kind of imply, at least to me, that it's going to be later on. I did kind of speculate that, yes, we were going to be seeing it release on Steam eventually, so that people who really wanted to just wait for Steam could do just that. And it seems that's kind of sort of confirmed from that statement. Also, they've also said that if you really want to just not get it on Epic, you can also get a PS4 code instead if perhaps you have a PS4 kicking around, or again, you can just get your refund if you really feel that you don't want to play the game if they're going to be supporting Epic Games, which I think is going to be quite a popular option. I'm curious what you guys think, however. Let me know your thoughts. What are you going to be going for if you back this game? Oh, and another fun little exercise for you when it comes to Ampere. Hit me up with your predictions. What are we going to be seeing from Ampere versus Touring? I want to hear your thoughts about it. I meant to ask you earlier, but it kind of slipped my mind. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.